My name's Polly Higgins and I'm a planetary rights lawyer. What we're seeing here in Copenhagen is a rather unusual situation that we've never had with international climate change negotiations before. In fact, we've got a situation where the people are now actually beginning to have a voice. But is that voice really being heard? I travelled here by the Climate Express train and that was the first time that they'd actually allowed politicians and various individuals who are involved in the international negotiation process to meet with some activists, to meet with some more mainstream individuals, to meet with the press, to meet with some artists. So it was an opportunity really to actually mix and allow various people to speak that wouldn't normally speak. For instance, I, I ended up getting to speak to Akam Steiner, head of UNEP. Uh, that wouldn't normally happen that I would have the opportunity to sit down and talk to him. However, we still have a rather unusual situation that the people and the politicians are still separate. The politicians are housed out in the Bella Centre, and that's a conference centre that's slightly outside town. The people are housed in largely at the Climate Forum, that's the centre, the big hub of where the people are. We have a lot of events going on here, the indigenous networks have various events, our various NGOs are having events, the people themselves are holding events. There's music, there's activities, it's very enjoyable, but also we're dealing with very serious issues at the same time. But the question is, is whether or not actually the people's voice is being heard here. And I don't think it really is just yet. We're seeing steps to see whether or not it be integrated. But one thing that really made me concerned was that the Danish government just last week passed legislation to ensure stricter regime with crowd control for the march on Saturday. So we're still creating legislation that's born of fear. And what we need to do is embrace that and have trust, trust in the process. I think personally that the people need to have a stronger voice within the negotiations. Ultimately the NGOs and the various organisations who are here to input into the process only have observer status. And the most telling thing of all is that the indigenous people, and that's 350 million people in the world, they don't have a voice at all. They may well be part of an NGO as a representation, but it's observer status. And that means ultimately you don't have a say in what's happening. And it's the indigenous people who are living at the very edge of the planet, at the very severe areas who are most affected by climate change. And their voice isn't being reflected in the negotiations yet. But it is just day four. And tomorrow we have a very interesting day coming up where we're looking at the indigenous voices, spiritual voices, and what they can say and how they can input into the process. It remains to be seen whether or not that actually will happen.